And so this is something that I've been using for probably like a few years now. Uh, some brilliant guy that works for Houdini made all these game dev tools. Yeah, yeah, and one that, of, those sound amazing. Oh my God, Luis Carell. Yeah, he's the man. So this is, um, I've been using the skinning converter of his to bring in deformations in there. Yeah. So what I'm doing here is I'm basically starting with the face mesh and sphere, whatnot. And do to do, that's just getting the face mesh ready to be dropped on. Then here I'm starting with the sheep. Blech. And transforming. Oh, let me go back to the beginning of the sim. And then what I did is I ran him through a vellum sim so that he'd balloon when he hit something. And then when I played the sim back, then you get some like nice squish on the face there. And then just like ah, moving. Very cool. <laughs> yeah. So moving him, obviously moving the sheep around will mean you get a different squish every time. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, I would personally, I would never want to hand animate that. So I'm always looking for ways to do things procedurally when I can. It's like a semi-procedural uh, face slapper. But then the magic is in the skinning converter. A while ago, I had, when I was using Maya to bake end cloth sims, I was using something that took every vertice and put a bone on every vertice and baked it. Yeah. And although it did a great job, it was super unoptimized because this sheep, for example, like, um, it's got like, do, 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 do. Yeah, like nine, it would be like 4,500 bones, which obviously yeah. we don't want. Yeah. So the skinning converter here is where all the magic happens. And this is nice because it gives you a visualization of the areas that are going to be less affected by the skinning. Anywhere that's black is going to be kind of left out. And it allows you to kind of like place them and do, do, do. you can choose how many bones there are. Does anyone actually know the maximum amount of bones there are in Spark? Because I've done this with 50 and I've done it with 70. And sometimes it's telling me the 51 is too much. And then sometimes it'll let me bring 70 in. Interesting. Well, I mean, rule of thumb, I think, is that you should not use that many bones. <laughs> but um, no. I think uh, something like a twenty, couple of twenty something is, is is considered all right. But as Nolan says, it's about the naming convention, and he figured that out. Uh, so if they have a specific way they are named, then you can bring in hundreds. Apparently, that's really interesting. Yeah. That seems like a bug to me. <laughs> anyway, um, so this is, yeah, so then say 20 is all you want. 20. But then you can see, obviously, there's going to be parts that are more left out or not. But anyway, so this is how I've been able to bring it in. And then you do like a convert to bones. Then, you know, it goes through and it keyframes everything for you. It goes through the sim, so you're not sitting there rigging everything and you know you keep something by you that you can do while this is simming <laughs> good yeah you know that's that's houdini and that's why i like real-time stuff i don't like waiting i don't like rendering yeah, although sometimes same. it's like i will say though sometimes i'm like oh cool this is doing something so i can go like away from my computer for a minute okay so that completed and then when you go out to the object, then you get inside here your 50 bones. Yeah. Voila. Blech. And that did a pretty good job capturing the animation. Um, yeah, so then this actually, this is the most annoying part for me that took me a minute to figure out, like, just what part so in the ROP net, that's where you do your like your export. So when you go to select what to export, you know, you have like a lot of different options. Like, well, do I grab it from the geo? Do I grab it wherever? But you just grab the top of that hierarchy, the skinning conversion right there. Boop. And then that should export fine for you. And 
then I've actually I've been bringing it into Maya and re-exporting. I like will bring it in there, make sure everything's good, and then I'll export again. And like it seems like uh, it likes that better. I've brought things directly from Houdini into Spark, but sometimes things get wonky. What are you using, FBX? Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, it brings I've, a thousand FBX. I felt that same issue, actually, as well. So cool thing is that Houdini can export GLTF, but unfortunately not animation. So you do have to uh, use the FBX thing, and it does not like uh, it. Spark sometimes doesn't like it, and I have to do the same thing. Like just, and actually, from I'm using mostly Cinema 4D, and actually for Cinema it's uh, it's uh, similar, and it's literally just bringing it into Maya, opening it up, saving it again as FBX, and then it will work. Yeah. So it's like I don't know. I'm literally using Maya there. as like a weird converter for yeah. for that sometimes. So I can show you guys what it looks like in Spark. It's pretty, pretty goofy. And I've also noticed too, I mean, I'll capture this FBX, I'll bring it into Unreal Engine, I'll bring it into Maya, it'll look great. And then sometimes things when they go into Spark, I don't know what it's doing, but it'll just look really different Yeah. or off. Yeah. So that's always been something I have to like troubleshoot. <laughs> And of course, because he hasn't saw me, he's got those those wide eyes. Right. Oh, okay. That's uh, yeah, yeah. Now I get it. <laughs> yeah. Do you know if actually uh, they have the counting numbers, or do they have numbers in Instagram yet? Or like what text? Mean? I mean, rendering text. Or is that not there yet? I don't know. Um, in yeah. Instagram, you cannot do text. Are you? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, is that still the case? It used to be an only Facebook thing. Right. Hey, uh, I just want to react to the chat really quick. Nolan is saying FBX 2013 um, may be Blenders because what actually I looked into the files that Cinema and uh, Houdini put out. And if you look at them, if you export them in ASCII format, you see that FBX 2016 also has different versions. So there's like a version 4 point something of FBX 2016 and a version whatever other. And Spark just likes the one and not the other. So basically, just like Maya says it in a different version or whatever, and then it works. And um, but oh, that uh, is really good to know. Thanks, Nolan. You the man. Oh, cool. And dynamic test text exists, so I can actually make this the way I wanted to. Oh, you cool. want to make a counter, right? Yeah, you gotta count yeah. the sheep for you for lazy, yeah, yeah. lazy insomniacs. Very good. So. Yeah, oh, and then the eyes. That was just a easy, like, ZBrush move stuff around deformation. Yeah, but that looks cool. You guys all know that. Don't need to go over any of that. But um, um, I don't know. I mean, chat, if you want to, if anyone wants to know how to do the eyes on the guy. And uh, if what's his name again? Uh, no. Yeah, I forgot. But, like, the guy, the uh, uh, African. You know this guy's name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We figured out who that is. It's like, no uh, it's, yeah, yeah. It's like they are all Facebook employees, like all of the. Uh, oh my god. Uh, uh, preview <laughs> persons. And, I've been um, waiting to like run into these people someday. Yeah, and yeah, just yeah, be yeah. Like, No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have the, uh, I, I, you know, on the Spark group, some somewhere is actually they posted the uh, Facebook profiles of the, of the persons. Oh, that is so funny. Yeah. I love it. I'm yeah. so glad someone figured that out. I hope they use like Facebook's Face Finder thing to find them. Um, so there we go. That's some, that's some sheep for you. And what I did is to make it right now, I have two different sheep on there and I just offset their rotations a bit. Whoop. So they're randomizing a little bit of rotation on it. So it looks like, and the scale to make it look like you're getting yeah, cool. a wider variety of sheep. So hold on, how are you, I'm sorry, I, I kind of missed one step. So how are you doing the, the all the sheep? Like what, like, so, okay. So you simulated a bunch of different faults, right? Then you exported each of them as FBX, right? So there's then, only two falls in here right now. Okay, and how do you do, basically emit them or how do you, what, what do you, how, how does it work? Yeah, so I'm, it's actually like, um, simple what I did here for that. Um, okay, sorry, I'm like so used to moving around in Unreal. It's like whoop. yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. It's weird. <laughs> oh, they should just all you know all do the same old uh, Maya. Uh, uh, 
Right? Um, I don't know so, why they have to, like, everything, I'm just like, what is the click to move over? I don't know. So I'm just looping these animations, and I'm randomizing a bit of their rotation every time. And then I'm also randomizing a bit of their scale every time I they fall, just to make it look like there's more different sheep. Right, right, I see, okay. So but there's this actually, always the same amount of sheep. There's yeah. always the same amount of sheep. There's only two sheep. Oh, and then there's this guy creeping along the top. And that was just another Houdini like bend that I used the. It was like just the bend nodes, so I could bend them and bend yeah. them back and just animate. And then I used the same exporter for that. So there was three a, sheep. That was actually something I'm looking into. That's actually something I'm, I'm looking into to use a vertex displacement to implement a bend in uh, a Spark. Yeah, um, that would be absolutely amazing. I mean, I, I, really... I was looking at what you're doing, and I'm like, that would be cutting out so much of what I've been doing in Houdini. That would be wonderful. Yeah, I, I, exactly. Because I also I hate jumping around between programs because of that. Those little, it's, I, I think it's like those little psychological things, exactly like you mentioned. Uh, you know, you, the, every time you jump around, your brain has to readjust, so you kind of lose your track a little bit, uh, and so. Even though it might be more difficult to do something in one program, I'd rather doing in, is, do it in the same program and not jump around that much. Uh, right. And it, no, and it's a gamble. Every time you export an animation from any program yeah. and you bring it to Spark, you're like, yeah, yeah, what yeah. is this going to look like? It's like so weird. I'm losing so much. Just think about it. how much time you lose just by exporting and importing. It doesn't work. You do it again. And it's like, oh my God. Yeah. Oh, if it looks like the sheep are lagging, that's because my whole bandwidth is lagging. Yeah, so it's not the sheep. It's, the it's not the sheep. It's it's, it's me. Uh... <laughs> it's my computer. <laughs> I saw that. Um, yeah. So this actually brings me to the next thing that I. So yesterday, I was thinking about this sheep, and I was thinking about how much I wanted them to be able to have more animations and share the animations between one sheep. And you can't really do that so well with the setup that I had in Houdini. And I was thinking about the original setup that I had in Unreal Engine and how I could bring those animations in. And I realized it's probably very easy. And it wasn't that hard. So I'll go to that then. Boop. Let me save that. So Bondel is asking whether you can do that in C4D, and the answer is no. Um, can do what the well the process. The, well, you can export it, but you cannot do the skinning conversion thing, where you do an arbitrary. What mm. you could do basically is that you you would rig the uh, sheep, right, and then um, uh, and then do uh, and then animate it. And could you do a uh, ragdolls in cinema? I think somehow you can, yeah. So you can do it that way. But like this, what you're saying, that skinning converter thing, that is. That's Houdini think, specific. Yeah. And actually, yeah. also, it exists also in Maya. I just wanted to point that out. So there's this thing here, skinning converter for Maya. And that is uh, exactly the same thing. And. Um, How cool they updated it. Well, this one is like very old. I think that's the original one, but I do. Is think that, that's not it, the one with the revertex, though. No, no, oh, no. Oh, that's five years ago. Yeah, but that's a, it's a, it's a plugin. But actually, we tried uh, the Houdini one and the Maya one, and the Maya one has a, a couple more uh, things you can tweak. So sometimes in like some edge cases where the Houdini one was not working out great because, I don't know, for whatever reason, uh, we tried the Maya one. So it's like if you're working in Maya, um, then um, 